So welcome back, everyone. Um, this is actually episode four for us. Um, we just did another one, but there will be... Well, I'm not going to say that because I would be ruining the story, but anyway. Um, today we have a well an episode again where there's only us two. Um, and it's actually questions from listeners or fans. Um, and yeah, we'll be asking them towards each other and... Um, See what comes out of it. <laughs> I think it will be very interesting because there's a couple of questions in there which yeah. I love to answer, but uh, we might end up with a little less friends after this episode, but that's yeah. cool. Depends, yeah. <clears throat> Before we we start with the drama, um, we actually have our first uh, podcast sponsor. Mm. Um, it's uh, Foto Robains and uh, Canon, because um, those who watched us in the beginning first two or three episodes on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You saw the quality was not so great from the cameras. We had some cheap equipment. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thanks to Fotorobains, actually, they they upgraded us with four uh, Canon PowerShot GX7s Mark III. <laughs> Look at that <laughs> advertisement. Where uh, did you write it down? I remember that. Oh. Yeah. Um, we're able to film in 4K now. It's still a new system, so hopefully, hopefully everything works. Uh, we will also add some some advertisements here and there from now on, um, simply because Dries is a bit broke and needs a bit more money, so <laughs> that's where it will go to. Yeah, um, all the tax in Belgium. Oh, you pay taxes now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think um, we can start with the drama. Yeah, let's start. Well, actually, it's the first great question for you because I know you will answer positive on this one. How many race cars have you peed in? <laughs> <laughs> this question question, question? Came, came back, strangely enough, a couple of times. <clears throat> well, so, yeah. uh, it would be. It's obvious when you do it, when they look at you, <laughs> they just see <laughs> a lot of pee coming out. Um, I did, I think, three or four times. Oh, man. It's disgusting. <laughs> you never did it? <laughs> no, never. If somebody jumps out of the car... And he peed in, I don't jump in. <laughs> I, I don't. You're going as... I, <laughs> nope, nope. <laughs> I just, I, I, I run for the hills. I, um, no, I don't do the man. I it. just hate the feeling when I need to pee. And then when there's a long safety car, then... Yeah, How can you even do fly. this? I once tried, I'm not going to lie. I think it was in Daytona. It was a long safety car and I had to pee. But I tried to push... <laughs> To make it come out, but it didn't work. It didn't. I, 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 I couldn't do it. Maybe you can practice a couple of times <laughs> in your road car. <laughs> it didn't work. No, I, it takes a bit of effort, but yeah, once you, you're probably very experienced. It, it probably eat. goes out with, before, without you knowing. <laughs> you want to just hear an even more nasty one, actually. <laughs> you, know, you shit uh, in the car. Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> At my last triathlon. <laughs> While I was running, <laughs> no way. Because <laughs> I mean, there are toilets, but then you need to stop when you lose time. And I was like, "Fuck this! I'm not didn't train whole uh, months to, to lose two minutes because I need to pee." So, and now and then, you know, did it while I, it was so How warm. So everybody thought I was while sweating you're running. a lot. Yeah, that was more hard yeah. actually than the car. <laughs> oh, I, I, you should uh, text Maxim Martin. He does it as well. He also pees in the car, but he wears diapers. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. I swear on my life. He wears diapers. Yeah, but the worst is Stefan Ortelli. He once did it in the car in a sprint race for half an hour. <laughs> that was disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't jump in when they pee. I honestly... No. I did a race... I mean, I did 24 hours of um, of uh, <clears throat> Le Mans with uh, Max. And we were sharing a motorhome. And he opened his bag and he had... Or he opened his luggage and he had this big bag of diapers. <laughs> and I was like, is your is your son coming this weekend or <laughs> you have to do a diaper change? No, 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 this is for me when I'm driving. So he literally wears it. And then I was curious. So I asked, uh, you know, after every stint and, and yeah, this time I peed once. And then sometimes he, I peed twice. It's not a stupid idea. but No, because then you don't pee in the, in, the, in the seat so then at least your know, next driver can have a relaxing stint instead of sitting in a, in, a, in a bag of pee I'm sure you would appreciate it now that you told the whole world he's wearing <laughs> diapers in the next car <laughs> well, it's okay he's a good friend so it's okay 
So this question will, yeah, will be interesting. <clears throat> let's let's say it in the in the nice way. And it's actually a question coming from uh, from a fan. Yeah. No, from another driver. But I will like uh, ah. keep the numbers. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember. Um, yeah. Your most disliked driver in the paddock, or you can even, or we can even make a top three. <clears throat> I can make a top ten, but. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, um well, for me it's difficult because I am I'm not so difficult in life. Um I guess. I'm very open, so I but there was one uh guy, he's Italian, um which I probably don't like so much. I think we both don't like each other. I mean we raced a bit together a few times, but um I mean don't think there was anything to lie about, uh to be honest to each other that we maybe don't like each other. And I don't think there was anything wrong with that. Like, I think some people like each other more than others and we just couldn't really find a way to get along. And I must say, I, I have a lot of respect for him because he is very quick and very competitive. Um, but from the other side, we just don't get along because I don't know why. Okay. So yeah, I only have one. I, I don't think I I can make it top three. No, but if you, um, you don't need to. No, as far as I know, maybe one pops up. I'll, 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 I'll shoot it out. But uh, for the moment, yeah. Well, I mean, for sure there are drivers which I can get better along with than others. But um, yeah, I don't know. What about you? You have a list of top twenty or <laughs> top thirty? <laughs> no, I mean, I also know I'm not the most light guy in in the paddock neither. Well, it's not about light. It's just you're very closed. Well, I'm also not there to make friends. I mean, this is a cocky way of saying it, but it, it's true. You're there to, and I heard this in an interview with, with somebody outside of motorsport, I think. <clears throat> You're there to win races. And when you start, I mean, not saying this is my case, but when you start to beat other people or are, they, they tend to mm. like you less <laughs> than, than, than the other way around. And I respect everybody. Uh, for the talent and and the things they have, but I'm I'm not really looking to become yeah, best buddies and invite everybody to my wedding um, or birthday party. Um, I I do get along with uh, very well actually with ninety five percent of the drivers I really work with. But people from other brands, yeah, I know. I also don't really make the effort to yeah, to become their best buddy. Um, my top three. <laughs> Um, yeah, I would say on th third place, probably Calvin Van Oh yeah? Yeah. Well, to be honest. I'll, I'll spare the reasons why not to, because out of respect, but, um, yeah. Uh, to be honest, well, because I raced now the last two years with him and now we get along well, but I uh, remember in the beginning, there was also a bit of tension and rivalry and... Yeah, but yeah, it's your third place. What a second. Yeah, again, and I don't know them in like a best friends or whatever atmosphere. So maybe there's a really nice guy, but it's just, I have yeah, no connection with him. And it's, yeah. He also stopped saying hello to me when I, when we crossed each other in the paddock. So. Yeah, he's, he also, he, he, I think he told me once, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Second one is Jules Simkoviak probably. <laughs> yeah. Because we, yeah, we had this crash in Misano. Yeah. There, I lost a bit of respect because it doesn't matter who was at fault. If you have a crash with somebody and the other guy is in the hospital, yeah. normally you have the decency to go to each other and, and say, are you fine or yeah. whatever. And he, he never did. Like He did it six months later. And I remember Jacqueline, she was there as well. He he came to me and wanted to give me a hand and, and whatever. And I yeah told him to, to peep Fuck off. off. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, at the end, I also but agree. I agree because at the end, when you have a big crash, the at least to to be e even though it doesn't like I said, who doesn't matter who's in fault. You can no, no. But if you see it's a big one, I yeah. mean, you you're again you're racing against each other. But at the end, when somebody's badly hurt, and you even though you don't have to know him, it's anyway because it can happen to you the next corner. Yeah. So um, my winner is Mao Engel. <laughs> And to be fair, I 
respect him a lot because I think he's a really good driver. Mm. Um, he's has a very, very big CV. He's always one of the quickest guys. But yeah, personally, I remember him and me having more discussions together about on on track activities than 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 friendly words. But I mean, when I see him as well on the normal things, I, I mean, it's not like I don't speak to the guy and ignore him, not at all. But um, yeah, always tend to have some kind of discussion with Maro. <laughs> Yeah, he's a he's a he's a special character, but um, like you said, he's he's uh, he's quick. But I can I understand what you mean and 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 the reasons why uh, he's your number one option. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's continue because it's not. I mean, at the end, it's a uh, it's a fan's question. Uh, he's a we he's a very we need um, to answer him. He's a very happy fan. He's actually a girl, but uh, he doesn't know yet. That's what you, Jamie, know who asked the question. Yeah, I know. That's why I was <laughs> a <bit> joke. <laughs> um, for $1 million, would you drive each other off the track? I'll let you start first because I asked the question. Absolutely. I think I would also do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, you did it already for zero euros, so why would you not do it for 1 million euros? <laughs> no, I mean, for $1 million, it's a lot of bikes, holidays. Oh, my God. I mean, I wouldn't do it hard, but just give you a little nudge, and so you you're off. Yeah, yeah we do the same. Wouldn't try to break your legs, but yeah. no, no, I'll just push you wide and make you lose like ten places. Yeah, yeah, and Sounds then quickly go for free. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> no, not gonna say anything. Um, what's your biggest rivalry? Um, yeah, probably the Audi days uh, with René Rast. Yeah. Um, I mean, today I think I, and René me as well, I respect him a lot as a driver and, and, and what he has achieved. But back then we were, it was 2013, 14 mainly. Um, he was, he's two years older than me. So he was like the guy next in the queue mm. to go into the Audi LMP one project. And I was like behind him. So I would say we were both maybe a bit, uh, yeah, the two quickest guys in that moment in GT at Audi, and we both wanted to get to LMP1. And um, he will probably tell the story differently, but he, he came and I was younger and I was kind of looking up to him. Um, and he was very quick at that moment. So I was trying to learn it from what he was doing. And I was asking his questions and do you train and, and how do you drive and this. And and then that year, first year, 2013, he was actually, yeah, he was quicker than me and I was having difficult times to catch up until I started noticing he was pretty much everything he was telling me was not the truth. Um, he was, yeah, he was lying about certain things. Um, and, and yeah, we were testing here in Zolder and he was very quick and we said that we would, wouldn't take the curbs, for example, you know how much difference it makes. And, but it was like seven tenths quicker than me. And I'm like, fuck, can I do, are you taking curbs? No, are you sure? No, 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 not taking them. And I looked at the video and he was going straight everywhere over all of them. <laughs> and I was like, why? I was still young. I, I wasn't really understanding that game, let's say. And that continued over a lot of other stuff. And then the attention started building. And then 2014, I uh, yeah, I worked a bit and, and I was kicking his ass in that year um, and qualifying in the races. And, and he was getting frustrated. And then we did the 20 rounds of spot together. Um, where we had a great lineup together with Marcus Winklub and we ended up winning, but uh, it was decided that he would do a super pole and I would do the start. Um, but I ended up feeling really well in the car and, and, and was, was quick in practice and so on. So in the end, I don't remember who, but somebody decided that I would do a super pole. And when he got that news, he... He got really angry and said, ah, then I don't do the start and this and that. And, and it got into a real discussion oh, where, where Vincent, where they, I had to have a meeting with Vincent actually <laughs> to calm each other down. And in the end, I did that. I ended up doing super pole and put it on pole. And because of that, I also had to do the start and I came in first as well. And he did have an awesome job at the end of the race and we ended up winning the race. And mm. like back then we couldn't walk through one door together yeah but now I, when i look back to it i was like okay i was young and unexperienced um 
So looking back at it, it was, it was childish and stupid, probably from the both of us, but we yeah, were just for sure, both of you. like two, yeah, two alpha dogs uh, in the pack. Yeah, you you you, you fight to yeah. to kind of show who's who, who's boss. Which honestly nowadays I I don't really think about anymore. But yeah, back then when you were a bit younger, um, but those nowadays we had actually had a, a drink about it in the mall this year together with Vince. And I think you were there. I was there as well. Yeah, and we were laughing about it the whole time. So yeah, at the end when you look back at it now, it's good that you can laugh about no. it. But like you said, I mean, if you both want to achieve the same thing and you're so close to each other that only those things can make a difference, which is stupid actually because it's actually wasting your time and his time and to, 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 to put so much effort in this yeah. in this shit. That um, yeah. What's your biggest rivalry? Um, I would probably say my rivalry against Marcello. Um, not mm. that we don't like each other because I respect him. Um, also because he, he was very good in single seaters and he was close to, to coming to formula one. Um, and now in GT cars, he is one of the best or, or close to the being the best, uh, GT driver. Um, yeah, it's mainly, we are not, I mean, for, for sure he drives a different brand. He drives for Mercedes. And at that time I was always driving with Audi. So it was sometimes very frustrating that he would be in front. Uh, actually, the last three years I've beat him in, in sprint, uh, except this year he was very strong. He won almost everything, um, which is then sad to see because you want to beat him. Um, but it's not something which I would not be able to sleep from or something. It would on the weekend itself, I would really want to beat him and make sure that we could be in front of them. Um, something that I actually had uh, uh, the first time that I was meeting Calvin, actually, Van der Linden. Yeah. I had actually a bit mo <clears throat> bit worse. Uh, we really didn't speak a lot to each other uh, because at that time I was, uh, I think, very new into Audi. I was only there for two years and he was there four years or something. And there was like, DTM was back then still uh, uh -huh. very, very cool and, and, and still the cool cars to, to race with. Now it's the same same stuff, just different things. It's I don't really enjoy, uh, enjoy looking or enjoy watching it. But um, back then, you know, you had the cool cars and we were close to be able, I had the DTM test, he had a DTM test and we were in contact to do the simulator and this and that. And, um, I remember there was some things with each other. We didn't really speak, uh, because we both wanted to get that, but at the end, nobody of us, no, both of them, uh, of us didn't get anything. Um, but then afterwards, and I think this is also where it changed for me, the, the, the way I think about the endurance racing, I had a, let's say a, a big rivalry with Kelvin uh, before we drove together. But then as soon as we drove together in the beginning, we were probably both like, oh, you know, but even though we both knew that we both are probably uh, one of the quickest. So if we can work together, it can be yeah. very, very good. And then I just settled with it. And I think he as well. And then we actually we became good friends. We we did three seasons together and we, well, we won a quite some races we won Suzuka Nürburgring and so it was cool to see at the end but a bit like you had with Rene but then at one stage I just settled with it and it worked out but yeah I don't I'd say the biggest one probably is uh, the one with Cello because it's still going on as we speak no. have you ever driven an illegal <coughs> race car um <coughs> that's actually Spa 24 hours <laughs> That's actually a funny story because a lot of people think that and actually actually it's not true. Um, actually never, as far as I know, uh, driven an illegal car. Of course, as you mentioned, in 2018, I was on pole in Spa by six tenths. Which it must have been illegal. Everybody <laughs> probably thinks it was illegal. And um, so they um, as, a, accused us of having tape around the airbox mm -hmm. so um, you have the airbox I don't really know how it works but anyway there was some tape around it uh, around two sides but it was on every WRT car so it was on 
we had, I think, four cars in the team and every car had it. And if you would go to look at all the other Audis of all the Audi Sport team, uh, or like the factory entries, they, they would all have it. But they didn't mention, they didn't say anything. They just said, oh, you have tape, you're, you're disqualified. So then, uh, you know, Armin Splitch, or Splitch, mm-hmm. the, he's a... Mm-hmm. He's a special character. In the beginning when I arrived at Audi, he was like always... He's very introvert. Yeah, he was. I was speaking and I was saying hi and he was like, hi, hello. Like, and German. German. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I was like, oh man, I cannot really get a, a feel with this guy. But actually now he's, when we see each other, we are very, very friendly. We give each other a hug and it's very nice. Um, so he, after that, after Spa, there was Suzuka and um, he went together with... Armin, and then he went with uh, the, the BOP guy of SRO, the uh, boss of SRO, and Vincent, and um, was there one more? I don't know, uh, Chris Renke. They went to have a meeting in uh, Suzuka, and Armin just destroyed the SRO uh, BOP guy and uh, the boss with just putting pure facts on him. Like everything what he said, the, they couldn't say anything because what, what he was saying was the truth. Mm. There were the tape was around every car. They had pictures. They could show. They went to even Lamborghini cars, which they have mm-hmm. uh, close to the same engine or same chassis. Everybody had it, and just because probably the gap was too big, they um, they just said. Politics. I must say that the engine we had that race was unbelievably strong. It also broke in the race, so it was towards the end of his life, mm-hmm. um, which probably did a, a very deal of, 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 of why it probably was such a big gap. Also the lap, I feel like I probably can never do the same time again because I think it was quite a quick lap time. Um, so yeah, that's just my top off of that uh, question because a lot, and a lot of people probably say, yeah, you drove an illegal car, but it wasn't. You? Well, yeah. <laughs> I actually once drove an illegal car, yeah, and I think most of us know. Um, it was a very awkward situation. It was 2016. I was doing GT Masters with, it's called MS Racing. Kfz. I think. Kfz. Kfz. Tyler 24, 320, uh, was a sponsor. And I mean, no respect for them. It was not the most professional team I've <laughs> I've raced for. I was trying to get it with Florian Stoll, who was one of the brothers who owned the team. And I mean, we were not the strongest pairing together, let's say. But on Sundays, most of the races, we did still finish on the podium. Um, and then came the fourth or fifth race in Red Bull Ring, which, you know, for Naudi is normally not the strongest yeah. racetrack. And they came to me in the beginning of the weekend and said, yeah, uh, we did some uh, some testing um, on the, you know, the test bench and we found something uh, on the engine. It's a bit of a gray zone. We don't really know how much it will affect, uh, but we think it will be good. Um, yeah, just have a look how it is, and 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 especially don't tell anybody. Like, yeah, I, I'm, I work for Audi. They, I mean, I have a contract with them, and I'm. They sent me to this team. So when I go to Audi and say, hey, "Look what the team's doing," then yeah, the relationship with the team is done. Um, but I was also scared, am I doing, are we doing something illegal or, or what else? Or but Anyway, started to drive and most of the time they also asked me to drive alone in practice. So I didn't really, could notice what was going on. And then in the race on Saturday, um, I was second behind the Corvette. And I had <laughs> to lift on the straights not to overtake the Corvette and Red Bull Ring. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, <laughs> not so sure about what's <laughs> happening here. And I actually got a bit of in a fight with the team in the evening because yeah, I was I was not in the position where I I wanted to be and I actually had nothing to, to do with it. I was not involved in it. I was yeah, the dummy <laughs> having to drive the car, but I didn't still really didn't know what was going on. And then it ended up that Sunday evening they checked the car for four hours and they found something at the air restrictor and the team got I think they got banned for forever from GT Masters. Yeah, I think yeah. Okay. But even I got banned for that year. <laughs> No way. <laughs> yeah, from DMSB. And I was like, I didn't even know what was going on. But in hindsight, it's always easy. But in hindsight, I would have gone to Audi and told them, yeah, hey, I just was gonna ask. look yeah. what's going on. But yeah, they didn't They didn't tell me it was something illegal at that, at that point or whatever. But yeah, it was 
it's very awkward situation. And what, what was it at the end? What I don't know. I still don't really know. They did something at the intake of the air, the restrictors. Um, but I mean... To probably get more air in it. Yeah, but it was obviously quite obvious. Um, <laughs> yeah, so. if you have to live in the street. <laughs> if you could be each other for one day, <laughs> what would you do? <laughs> be you for a day, I mean. <laughs> yeah, it's a good question, actually. Um, I would go and drive something and see how yeah, uh, how much talent you have. Ah, you mean like that? Yeah. I would go for a run and see how bad, <laughs> how, how much you suck at sports. And I would take a picture of your dick and put it on <laughs> Instagram. <laughs> Alrighty then, fair <laughs> enough. Um, <laughs> with the new iPhone Pro Max with the big zoom, you know. <laughs> you? Yeah, this out zoom, you mean. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would also be interested to see how you feel when you drive, like how bad it is. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, to, to see how it is, to, yeah, to feel if it's different. Probably it is because not everyone is different. I would probably plan with BMW my fitness check as soon as possible and go as <laughs> fast as possible there. <laughs> they will think I am, I am, uh, I don't know, I do Ironmans. Um, um, and I would probably also like to see how it is to enjoy having a, a kid. Yeah? Yeah, because I, I for sure I would like to have kids one day to see how it is, how... How how nice it is, or how how for pain and yas it is. <laughs> I think you will still wait a couple more years after that. Yeah, because you always say you want kids, but then yesterday we went for dinner and Emily screams two times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she, yeah, I don't mind when she screams, but she sometimes screams for like five minutes and she has this very uh, yeah, high like, voice. She likes to and make uh, people's then, ears. Yeah, hurt. It, it really hurts. But yeah, we'll probably do that. Okay. We can also still ask to babysit Emily for a day. Yeah, Victoria, which would be very No, no, happy just to. you. Ah. <laughs> but honestly, I would like to, but I don't think she she's a bit stubborn. I think uh, it's a bit, again, well, it's not really a guess from who she got it. But um, I don't think she would like to be with me for the day. <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like I would like to do it, but... We'll ask her when. Uh, I when think she comes you, back. It, with you and Jacqueline, the the mix of stubbornness, I don't think uh, next well, level. It it answers the questions why she's maybe stubborn sometimes. Okay. What's the most difficult part of being a race car driver? As a besides all the nice flushy things about being a professional race car driver, what's the most difficult part? <clears throat> um, being fit? No. <laughs> Um, or the part you enjoy less yeah this is true um, ooh good question again I would probably say depend I mean, to start the season you're of course very hyped because you go into the first race you know it, nothing to lose everything can start but if you go in the middle of the season and for example I had this a few times the last two years I did many championships I did like 20 plus races a year and sometimes I just had a month or two where I would come home, change back and go to the next one. And I think to be mentally uh, positive the whole time coming from a bad weekend, going into the next one, which is completely different again, to be able to arrive there with the same mindset you you go into when you go in your first race of the season. I think this is for something, at least for me, which um, can difference a few times like when I come from a bad weekend I find a way now to do it well but that when I did in the beginning I would go to the next one I would be like oh yeah fuck shit last race was so bad and and then you actually have to be positive on on the next one again and yeah I think that for me or for my side how I experience it uh, a tricky part to do to reset okay what about you hmm bit the same like what you said if if things are like this year in the dm are going very difficult and you know you need to continue it's it's with a lot of pressure um but i would say the the travel like yeah. you said like sometimes when it's 
like I love going to races and I, and I don't mind traveling actually when everything goes smooth, but it would be nice to be like a week away, at least a couple of days or a week at home and a week away like this. And sometimes I really have like going from A to B to C and, and so on with, you know, sometimes having already three bags in your car yeah. before going somewhere. And then if travel goes like smooth, it's okay. But some very often it doesn't go smooth and something is delayed or, yeah. lately, or you, lately you, is always like this. your flight is canceled <clears throat> and you're stuck in the airport and this, and, and this happens like way more often than you think. Yeah. And I always make the joke like, and unfortunately it will never happen, but if I would have a lot of money, uh, first thing is a private jet. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's, it's, it's a joke because it's, it's a luxury thing, but just to give you the idea that, um, yeah, the travel the long hours in the car and, being a rental car and then on, on those kind of things um, or being in a shitty hotel sometimes. Um, I mean, not to, to to sound spoiled, but if you're spending half of your year in, in hotels, then it's a bit more. Yeah, for sure. And then when you arrive, I also personally like to sleep and uh, I don't need my sleep, but I just like to sleep. <laughs> and I <laughs> I hate waking up early. So I also have like a a maximum um, limit of how far the hotel can be from the track. <laughs> <laughs> I remember once I checked in uh, to a hotel that was 30 minutes away. I checked in, I checked out <laughs> and I went to another one. I went to one which was Unless like 15 or 10 minutes away. 45 minutes. Yeah, but... You lose the, one and a half hour a day yeah. and you're so busy already and it's late evenings, early mornings. And, and you arrive there maybe once when you're having a bad weekend, you work, you, you know, you have to work to, to try to to get there. When you have a good weekend, it's of course different but, different, but when you have a bad one, you arrive late, you arrive at 11, then you have to wake, you have to be there probably at 8 and then you have to probably wake up at 6.30, 6.45, which is just stupid. Yeah. But yeah. Nice, another nice one. Did you ever have to share a car with someone you didn't like at all? <laughs> didn't like at all is a big word. Didn't. I did share the car with Frederik Verwisch. <laughs> Freddy. <laughs> yeah. Which is he's, he's a special guy, he's and, I, and I would say character. very different to me. But I, I I like him in in the way he is. But he's he's very different than me, and not only in personality but also in driving. Like he hated the car with oversteer, mm. and the Audi back then it was the only way to be quick. Yeah. And it was me and Adam already working on the car for years, and it was quick. We were always quick, and. But it was it was pointy. It was on the edge, and he hated it. And it was always this discussion. I remember, like, we had this Q1, Q3, Q4, and he would come in and say, "Ah, oh, the car is so nervous. We have to change something." And then I went in for Q4, and the thing just drove straight with understeer everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and it was yeah, it was just complicated. If, if you have so different driving styles yeah. and so different characters, it's um, difficult. Then then it's difficult. But it's not that like, I didn't didn't like him. Um, uh, he's not. He's not going to be my best man. Well, I'm not really married, but you know what I mean on on marriage. But um, yeah, probably, probably that period. Um, you? Well, I also shared the car that year, 2016. Oh, yeah, we were together with him. True, yeah. we were the third one. And I actually and, and could. I yeah. I don't also. I also like a, a very strong front. But anyway, um, I actually do did yeah. Uh, well. You asked me the getting the question, the guy I don't really like the most in the paddock. I had to share a car with him a few times, uh, even in LMP2 and also in Daytona. Um, By now you can tell his name. His name is Mirko. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you see this, you know, we can have a beer later. No, but just the... Yeah, I don't know. I just didn't... In Daytona and, and Le Mans, you know, I just ac accept, you know, because I know he's very quick and he's, you know, mm. he's very talented. So I just said, okay, we can, we can, we can get something very nice out of this. And, but you just have to be able to work together. And the first thing in Daytona was, uh, <laughs> did he just fart? <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> um, Strong mics. <laughs> 
Elsa from Canon? I know. Um, no, but the first thing... Should we w- cut this out or keep it yeah. in? <laughs> keep it in. Um, no, the first thing was, it was our first race together. And um, we knew each other, of course, from before because we raced against each other and it was always good battles, um, even now still. But the first thing was, he just arrived and he changed all the belts. And I was like, man, what the fuck? You just arrive and you change everything. I said we, I, I cannot because I could because he drove without an insert, so he couldn't find a way. So, mm-hmm. but said we have to find something. We can just talk about it together. And this was for me a very annoying thing. At the end, we had an amazing race. Uh, we almost won. We had an issue in the last two hours, which broke our rear wing. Um, if that would not have been the case, I maybe had a Rolex right now. Um, no, but it was. That's the thing what I said when you maybe are not, you know, having the best laugh or making jokes with each other. But you know that on the track it's it's very good. And yeah, this was the case. But that was one of those races where I probably didn't like. But it's also human, I think, because everybody's always from the outside. You need to be best friends with your teammate. And, and of course, it's what you try to achieve, but you don't get along with everybody in the world. No. You have people you get along with and people you don't. And that's actually also one of the most difficult parts of the job. Sometimes you have to work with people if it's your boss, your engineer, your mechanic or your co- teammate, which you don't really get along with. But it's the same like in a football team, probably you have to get along with mm-hmm. because you have no choice. You're trying to achieve the same thing. And it's a hell of a lot easier if you work together than when you fight each other. I mean, We've both been in that scenario. So. Yeah, and it's even if it's teammates or a new team or a new brand, it's mm. you have to be able to adapt to to new things all the time. Yeah. Worst car ever driven. That's a good one. We missed one. Did we? Yeah. The period oh. you wished a period of motorsports you wished you experienced. Like a oh, that's period. easy. Um, I would probably say nineteen fifty six. Oh. Yeah. You no, no, it was a it. joke. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, really? <laughs> um, like two thousand, like those GT one times. Probably say those or the end of the nineties. You mean? Yeah, end of nineteen, beginning two thousand. Yeah, those yeah, that time I would like to drive. Like no ABS, no traction control. Really nice race cars, no budget caps, no limits from the manufacturers. Just spend as much as you want and make the best car you can have yeah. and that that i think would be very cool to be able to be involved in that to 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 build a car to do all the testing you have unlimited tires you don't have a stupid pirelli which never really works and um yeah that would be that this uh, would be a nice era for me i'm the same actually i drove the 98 gt1 from where i'll tell you on the moment yeah um the porsche and it was one of, I remember when I grew up as the first kind of like endurance motorsport cars, which I was able to watch. So that's definitely also the GT1 era. era. Uh, and I would also like to, to at least have driven like the proper LMP1 cars as yeah. well. Because now we're, I'm involved in LMDH and it's, but it's not the same thing. It's less horsepower. It's a lot heavier. It's uh, quite a bit slower. Force, yeah. Um, when what I heard those things were, were really like proper rocket yeah. ships. Um, they were close to the Formula One times in Spa and stuff. So but that's, that's just the car because the competition, I mean, there were two peak years with Porsche, Audi, Peugeot and Toyota, I think. Um, not even yeah, all, not all even all Porsche, Audi, Toyota, yeah. I think it was. Um, but still, I mean, yeah, there you also had unlimited. You, you yeah. just had to make the best car you could possibly be, possibly make. And now... Now there are a lot of budget caps coming on everything, which is understandable because of having a fair square for everyone. But but I think we will live now an era where a lot of people in the next generations will say the same what we say now at the end of the 90s. I think yeah. in 10, 20 years, a lot of people would say we would have loved to be in the middle of the 20s uh, yeah. and experience a hypercar on the age. I mean, we still have to see how we'll go, but yeah. with the amount of cars we will have and everything. Yeah, I think so. But for sure, just time evolves all the time and everything mm. changes. And Worst car ever driven? Yeah. 
I actually don't know. Me neither. I haven't driven the BMW yet. But <laughs> <laughs> you no. will see it, not that bad. Um, um, wow, you say this often. <laughs> often yeah, come, I also often, a like, couple times a year, you come out of the car and say, fuck, this is the worst car I've ever driven. Because the setup is, 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 uh, just doesn't work. But if you have to pick one, I'm looking at my model cars, but... Mm. I remember the the very first time I drove a proper Porsche on the notch dive. And this is not really answering the question, but there I was a bit like, wow, what's this? Because it's completely different than, than yeah, the Audi. It's in a different car. The engine is in the back. Um, the feeling is completely different. That was a bit of a shock, but it wasn't like... After the next race, I, I really, once you knew how to drive, it was super nice to drive, but that was a bit of a shock at that moment. I was like, well, how am I going to do this? Because I was like, this is all I got. And I was 10 seconds off the pace on the Nürburgring and after like the first run. But um, I would probably say a spa test a few years ago. Go out of the box. The engineer said, yeah, this is the setup we have. We've been working on it. And I drive, I did two laps and yeah, I box, <laughs> I box, I just, they didn't, they do, yeah, you can do six laps. After two, I just, I was back in the pit lane. I said, guys, what the <laughs> fuck is this? <laughs> what did you make of this? It didn't break. It didn't turn. It didn't have traction. It didn't have high speed arrow. Yeah. It was the combination of everything. At the end, you know, we fixed it. And, uh, mm. But it's just sometimes you drive out. And I don't think they also don't expect this, that you come back and say, what is this? But This is difficult, actually, because yeah. it, it happens every three or four weekends or whatever when you get mm. out of the car. And if you speak to yourself or your teammates, it's like, this is absolutely yeah. <laughs> horrible. It's the worst thing I've ever driven. And it's <laughs> shit everywhere. Nothing's good. And then you need to explain to the guys who build and you have to try and explain it in the... Yeah. In kind a, of in a, in a friendly way, yeah, yeah. Because if you tell them they have a, I'm absolutely shit box. I mean, it's yeah, like you somebody say comes the to night, you and yeah. say, <laughs> <laughs> "You look shit today." <laughs> but right, well, you have to say it in a nice way, otherwise they get a bit upset. Yeah. I once had an engineer; he would get mentally upset if I would speak bad about the car. <laughs> he would get pissed off, and I would be like, "Man!" So I was so, after that. I was. Trying to be, be a bit more, him. trying to be a bit more nice yeah. on uh, on the radio. Mm. Yeah. Who's the coolest guy in the paddock? The Which most paddock? Well, doesn't matter. The the funniest, coolest, the one not necessarily the one you get along with best, not your best friend, but just coolest guy. I would say probably Jordan Taylor. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really, I I don't think I ever spoke with him, but. Um, He's always a cool guy also on Instagram and he has good ideas for, for, for social media actually. And he, he just do, does it, you know, the thing mm. when he, he could drive with Alonso, he made a video with him and uh, also with uh, Kobayashi and... Rodney Sandstorm. Yeah, to make all to make the idea, but then just you still have to do it. You still have to go on the racetrack and on mm. the paddock and, and look like a, a bit of an idiot sometimes. Um, but I know him a bit. You know, actually, in, in real life, he's completely the opposite. I, I never, I never spoke really. Yeah, he's I never shy spoke and guy, to him. Kind of introvert, but yeah, he's he's a very cool guy and a very, very nice personality. But you, um, I think I kind of what I appreciate appreciate about him is his absolute like straight on answer in the face honesty and Freddy. No, no bullshit and just tells you what he thinks and, and he's kind he's funny as well and I think he's friends with most of people is is me. Yeah, but he he says a lot yeah, yeah, he will yeah, say he, straight to the thing, but at the, sometimes now, also in yeah. the last couple of years. In the past maybe he was a bit like maybe You should take it with a bit of a yeah, glass of water or big, big mouth and and, 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 and and telling stories which is not, but now I think the last couple of years he's yeah, oh, yeah. You know, nice if guy. you if you speak to him, he always gives you a straight answer, and it's always quite funny. And and I don't know, it's just Man, a cool, is, funny guy. He has the the biggest laugh ever. We play Call of Duty together in the yeah. war in Warzone, 
and he has a he, he just has a a kid like yeah. he's very young and then <laughs> you're playing with him and he gets shot and he's like fuck what is this for shit <laughs> and the, the baby is like two doors next to him like and he's screaming like scheiße and i'm like mate <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> uh this is so funny so he's funny fun, that's why he's a, i think he's a funny guy and you you know you know what you have with the hmm. with him less favorable racetrack or a racetrack which you hate the most to be more blunt um oh saxe ring oh yeah i hate it that's one of my favorites oh i was there this year again i hate it why do you hate it i don't know i i i don't feel the flow in it the flow the flow of the I track just, i just like the flow of the, of the no track the because only the quick corners the and everything. Only thing i like is the uphill part where you have the quick part the d- double left triple left or whatever i hate it oh, yeah? it's disgusting i used to drive in formula 3 and i loved it yeah okay but a formula 3 is not a gt3 car yeah, okay well. it doesn't turn and it uh, no traction and there's just a way you have to drive on the track which you have to know and it was only my second time i was there i felt like i was completely lost like i was driving in another world <laughs> like uh that's yeah. not ideal yeah you definitely pull a car yeah i agree because of the track but the track uh because of the um, ah the asp- the the outsides no i'm 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 always been quite vocal on that i love proper tracks that's why i love to race in america because all the tracks there they're like proper you have asphalt a bit of grass a bit of gravel and you have a wall mm. sometimes even less that's true and if you make a mistake you're you're off and you're punished and that just makes it exciting and makes you feel you have more adrenaline and and it's just a lot more you know exciting to drive and and pull the car it's zero it's pretty much if you close your eyes it's like you have a parking lot with some cones, uh, which you have to drive through. Um, and you can spin at 350 kilometers an hour and the chances of you hitting something are still quite small in a GT car. I'm talking about a Formula 1 car or something. The Porsche, they go 350? So, um, which map is this? <laughs> map zero. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I never really enjoy. But it's a good there. test track. Yeah, you I have know. slow speed, you have curbs, you have a long straight, it's you a have nice, high speed. It's a nice era area, and it's a nice like uh, facility. Track, facility, yeah, mm. exactly. But the track itself is. Yeah, I agree. I okay, mean, I don't we, like. If we have to do endurance, we did an endurance test. I won like twenty four hours of in public car, yes, I never did. driving alone in the dark. Uh-huh. Nice. Nope. Nice. Oh, not a great question. What do you hate the most about each other? Where do I start? <laughs> um, it's gotten better lately. Oh. But the ability to make, oh, how do you say, it? to to meet, to to arrange something with you, to say, are we gonna do this? And you always say, yeah, yeah, let's do it. And then the next morning you're there at nine. Where's Trees? Not, not there. <laughs> yeah, or the other way around. <laughs> this is something um like you can't make uh, make Asprake. Yeah. Like old. Um appointments. Well yeah. Yeah, yeah like uh know. rely. Yeah, let make a Yeah, couldn't rely on, on when make you make a deal with it, yeah, yeah. or something. Yeah. 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 But, it's from, but it's got a better. Yeah. Probably I mean you've showed up for every podcast so far, so Yeah, true. But no, these things I, I must say I think is also something which not only in my private life, but also for racing uh, wise, I had to improve. So probably that's also helping me here. Um, who, which one I choose? Uh, <laughs> um, well, it's also gotten better lately. Um, the ability to to phone each other. Um, mm-hmm. I know there was a time where I you would call and two times, three times a week and three weeks later I would get a call back. <laughs> Not even a WhatsApp or but just a call. This got better lately. Yeah, I wasn't... Uh, I paid attention to it now, but I wasn't... Uh, I also didn't like to call, but I still it's, don't like to call, but I do now with, with you or family mm. at least. 
yeah it's uh, for me it, i always actually always call them. yeah uh, and now, then now i like to call with you like certain family but people where i don't like if i don't know the number i don't pick up mm. so, yeah. and then yeah stubborn but this also got better it's because of my meditations yeah probably you get yeah. very zen before yeah. you start your day yeah it helps Hopefully keep doing it yeah. <laughs> when the day you forget it don't don't, don't. call me <laughs> Um, coming up to our last question. Um, well, you don't have to pick me, pick somebody else, but <laughs> the fastest teammate you ever had. Um, well, I would probably have to refer again, again to my good friend, Mirko. Oh yeah? Because, yeah, as, as of he was a pain in the ass to work with for me and probably him, uh, me for him. It's probably him or Kelvin that okay. um, didn't have very much good teammates so far. Then no, <laughs> no, and GT probably that. And GT, I mean, I don't have so much uh, LMP two experience, but um, yeah, it was probably one of them where I really had to dig deep. Yeah, like pull it out of the bag to to make it work. Yeah, I, I remember especially the, the season I had to race against Kelvin and Mirko. They were doing both on one car, and I was with Charles and Mies. And um, I remember one race they both fucked up distance, and I had to clean it up again. <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing like that. But I it was uh, I, don't, I don't remember which race it was. Anyway, it was in Poricar, and I think um, before the stint, I was really like because I knew we were gonna be with each other, and I was like. I need to, I want to really push. Well, I, I pulled away, like, I had a very good stint, uh, like 15 seconds. But he came out of the car, he was, couldn't speak to him. Uh, would, I probably would be the same if it would be the other way around. But I really had to, you know, dig deep to, to make that work. Um, and probably Robin is also something... We know him now mm -hmm. quite well, but he is very fast, and especially in LMP2, even though I beat him in uh, in uh, Fuji. But um, how can you beat him when you're driving on the same car? Average. Okay. Um, no, but I think it's one of those three. I mean, we only did one season together, and we mm -hmm. never. I was. I wasn't where I am now. Um, so that's difficult to say. But I probably. One of those three, or them, them three, for me, are probably difficult for me to to be able to always have the edge. Okay. And you? I can pick one. I think I had a lot of difference one where, if you look at them, they're also really high name drivers. I think the first one was was Rene Rast. Mm. I mean, it's obvious. Uh, you see the, the amount he has achieved. And um, I mean, in all honesty, at Porsche, there there are a lot. I think when I was in America, uh, Nick Tandy. I mean, he's, no, he's quick. Huh? He's quick, naturally, but he's like such a fighter. Yeah. it's He's a real like English bulldog. <laughs> he, I mean, I, on in terms of speed, like, I don't think I had to like un was was underperforming against him. I mean, the qualifying's I was in front of him, qualifying's he was in front of me. I, I leave others to judge, but he's like a proper racer. Like I remember, without qualifying him by I don't know by half a second once in in Virginia, and and he went off as well. So we had to do something. He had to start last, which back then was seven or eight cars, and I was on pole. And going into corner one. Look in the mirror, he was second. <laughs> he just like outbreak everybody on the outside and, and overtook. And like, you know, if he's behind you, the, if there's 1% opportunity to do something, he will take it. And if it doesn't work, he'll probably hit you. <laughs> and and I have a lot of respect for that. If it's a guy you want, you want to have in the end of the race in the car, it's it's him. The other one is, yeah, old Bamber. Mm. Just as well... Uh, super high amount of just natural speed and yeah Kevin 
Game yeah. Master as well. It's just an absolute the way he achieves to to push. Yeah, it's crazy. And don't crash every every race. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's it's cool to see how he with a lot of respect. Um, goes two hundred. Like he always goes over the. He always two, What do you think is the limit? Yeah, he, over that. Uh, but he keeps it. He keeps it on on track. Um, which yeah, I mean those those four names I think are probably the four ones. I, not bad to say. Yeah. 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 Big, big big names. So. No, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. They are, all of them, they have a pretty stellar CV. Pretty good CV, yeah. yeah. All right. Those yeah. were the questions we picked. I hope um, everybody enjoyed it. I actually did. It was yeah. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. It was fun. Um, Let's see how many of our car driver listens to it. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, at the end, it's, it's just on it. Yeah. It's the truth. So We're still friendly, I think. I think it's the truth. So the truth is hard sometimes. But... Um, no, I enjoyed it. It's fun to do. We should maybe do it uh, again, not next time, but uh, sometime mm. soon um, to to have some more questions. We're also planning on, because what we said, we mainly invite guests mm. over and then sometimes you want to do stuff like this, like answer questions of people on Instagram, whatever, or we're also planning on doing like a, a race review when, exactly, when I went yeah. to Daytona and you went to Bathurst or, or we, when we both went to Le Mans or whatever to talk about that race yeah. a little bit um, to no, spice it up a bit. No, it's also cool. It's interesting. Yeah. Um, don't forget to uh, check it out on YouTube, Apple and Spotify. Um, you can leave a subscribing. Subscribing? You, you can leave a subscribing. You can leave a subscription. Maybe you can leave a review. We and leave a review and, and rate. Yeah. And um, yeah, check it out. <laughs> <laughs> yep, our next guest. Um, we kind of mixed up the episodes now, so I don't know, but you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Hope you enjoyed. And um, see you next one. See you soon. Ciao, ciao. I'm going to